good morning to one and all this is the fourth lecture on module 1 of the subject fluid mechanics and hydraulics for second year civil students of uh, kerala technological university i'm kavita m assistant professor in the department of civil engineering rajagiri school of engineering and technology so today's class we will be discussing about spillway gates in the previous lectures on module 1 we have discussed about the different uh, forces or the different ways in which pressure force can act on a body uh, when the body is in the vertical position when a body is in a horizontal position when a body is in an inclined position so on and so forth spillway gates are nothing but an application of all the concepts that we've studied till now and it's a real life example uh, which you get to see uh, on hydrostatic forces on surfaces so without further ado let, let us move towards the uh, topic so what are spillway gates used for spillway gates are basically gates that are used for regulating water level in a canal or river for the purpose of navigation so uh, i'll just demonstrate some photographs of spillway gates for you this is a spillway gate that has been um, built across a navigation canal you can see there are two gates here they are closed at an angle another view of a spillway gate all these are navigation uh, channels through which boats can pass and these gates are actually uh, closing the uh, cross section now this is a gif image of what exactly is the function of a lock gate so here you can see that water levels on either side of the lock gate are not equal and that is exactly why these lock gates are placed in uh, the position that you can see right now so initially the water levels are brought to, uh, brought uh, at the same level and then the gates are opened so that the ships or the boats can pass through these gates and that is the application of a lock gate so this is the plan and elevation of the lock gates uh, like you saw in the figure there are two gates that are bent at an angle this is the top view or the plan of the gates and this is the elevation in the elevation you are able to see only one gate and on two sides there are two different water levels on either side of the gate uh, h1 is the depth of water on the upstream side and h2 is the depth of water on the downstream side and the gates are in the locked position now we will be analyzing the forces that are going to be acting on the spillway gates due to water on either side of the gate so let us look at the elevation of the gates this only one gate can be seen on the elevation the other gate is on the opposite side so you are not able to see it now the width of the gate is taken to be b analyzing the forces acting on the gate this is the pressure force acting on the upstream of the gate f1 now a gate is nothing but a case one that is vertically submerged surface immersed in a fluid uh, because uh, the gates are vertically submerged inside the water and so f1 can be found out by the formula for total pressure force acting on a vertically submerged surface in a fluid that is f1 and it is acting at a distance of h star 1 so f1 is given by rho g h1 bar a1 that is equal to h1 bar means the center of the gate that is h1 by 2 the center of the submerged portion of the gate is h1 bar that is the distance of the center of gravity from the free surface and it is given by capital h1 by 2 a1 is the area of the submerged portion of the gate that comes to b into h1 so f1 we can deduce it to be equal to half rho g b h1 square the h1 star can be uh, determined using the formula ig by a1 h1 bar plus h1 bar uh, and ig1 would be b h1 cube by 12 which is the moment of inertia for a rectangle about its centroidal axis a1 is b into h1 h1 bar is h1 by 2 and uh, so substituting we will get 2 h1 by 3 as the location of the uh, point of action of the pressure force on the upstream side so this water column of height h1 is exerting a pressure force f1 on the gate and that f1 is given by half rho g b h1 squared and it is acting at a distance of h1 star which can be found out as 2 h1 by 3 now similar calculations can be done for the downstream side also 
downstream side the water column present has a height of h2 and so uh, conducting the same uh, calculations for the downstream side we will get f2 and h star 2 to be equal to half rho g b h2 squared and h2 star is 2 h2 by 3 i have just written it here i have just written the values here if you want you can do the calculations because this can be considered to be a vertically submerged surface of uh, depth h2 below the free surface and uh, f2 can be rho g a2 h2 bar and uh, h2 star can be calculated as ig2 divided by a2 h2 bar plus h2 bar if you want you can do the calculations you will end up with the same results since it's very similar to f1 and h star 1 i did not show the calculations instead i just showed just the results so f1 acting at h star 1 and f2 acting at h star 2 the net force on the gate is given by f1 minus f2 now let's take a look at the top view of the gate this is these are the two gates these are two gates that are in the closed position and we are going to take a look at the top view of the gate and the forces acting on the gate let the angle between the gate and this line be equal to theta if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta now this is because since the gates are of equal width this is an isosceles triangle and so their base angle should be equal and so both the angles are taken to be theta if these two angles are theta then the angle between the lock um, between the gates is given by 180 minus 2 theta so this angle is 180 minus 2 theta so drawing the free body diagram of the gate the forces acting on the gate in the horizontal plane are the net pressure force f1 minus f2 which we had computed in the previous slide so f1 minus f2 would be acting perpendicular to the gate and so when we are looking at it from the top view f1 minus f2 would be acting in this particular direction this is the net pressure force f1 minus f2 now it is given this direction because earlier when we saw we had seen the elevation of the gate and the direction of the forces this is the top view from the top when we are looking at the pressure force pressure force is going to be acting normal to the surface of the gate and so this is going to be the direction of f1 minus f2 now the next pressure now uh, since we have uh, denoted the external force acting on the gate what is remaining is we have to denote the reactions from the surfaces of contact when we are talking about a single gate it has two different surfaces of contact one is between the other gate the surface of contact over here that it shares with the other gate so there is a reaction force from here and another reaction force from the point of contact where the gate touches the river bank and so we have to draw reaction forces from the contact surface on the gate as well as from the contact surface on the river bank so the first thing that we are going to denote is the reaction force from the surface of contact with the other gate i'm going to call that reaction force as p now what would be the reaction force p's direction this would be the direction of reaction force p now you might ask or you might wonder why is it that p has been drawn vertically downwards always remember that the reaction from a surface of contact is perpendicular to the surface itself so the surface of contact between the two gates as you can see is a horizontal line and so the surface uh, reaction from the surface of contact is going to be perpendicular to the surface of contact and hence p is going to be perpendicular to this horizontal line and hence p is drawn in the vertical direction now this these are forces that are in the horizontal plane you are just looking at it from the top so these are actually horizontal forces okay they are in the they are lying in the horizontal plane and they are looking and you are looking at it from the top now the next reaction is the reaction from the uh, support uh, or from the river bank now in order to decide the uh, direction of the reaction force from the uh, river bank let us call that reaction r reaction from the surface of contact with the river bank the reaction over here now we don't know the actual direction like we could find out f1 minus f2 perpendicular to the gate or p is perpendicular to the surface of contact between the gates it is impossible to find out uh, or it is not impossible it is difficult to find out what is the direction of the reaction r from the river bank from the contact surface of the river bank but it is made simple by this assumption that these three forces p 
R and F1 minus F2 are coplanar forces and they are concurrent forces, which means that the reaction R will have to pass through the point of contact of F1 minus F2 and P. And so that is how we decide on the direction of R. R is the force that is going to pass through F1 minus F2 and P, the point of contact of F1 minus F2 and P. R will have to pass through this point of uh, intersection. This is because only if these three forces are concurrent will the gate be in equilibrium. And so they are coplanar forces, they are concurrent forces and they meet at the same point. So these are the three forces that act in the horizontal plane on a, uh, on a uh, gate. You might be wondering why I did not include weight of the gate here. Like I told you, I am actually considering only the forces that are acting on the gate in the horizontal plane. Weight acts in the vertical plane and that does not get included in this set of forces. These forces are only forces that act along the uh, horizontal plane of the gate. That is the pressure force F1 minus F2, the reaction from the gate equal to P and the reaction from the river bank equal to R. Now, these are the three forces and we have to obtain the angle between the forces if we are going to analyze them for equilibrium. We know that the gate is stationary, that is the gate is not moving, the gate is at rest. And so these forces are going to be in equilibrium. So in order to analyze equilibrium of these forces acting on the gate, we need to know the angles that these gates make, sorry, these forces make with the gates. Now these angles are theta. Now the angle made by this line, the center line and the base of the uh, triangle that I have shown here is 90 degree. If this is 90 degree and this is theta, then this angle becomes 90 minus theta. Now, we know that P is perpendicular to this horizontal line. And so, if this is 90 minus theta, the angle made by P with the gate would be theta. In simpler words, we could just say that the angle made by P with the gate is an alternate angle to the angle made by the gate with this, horizontal, with this line. And so this theta and this theta are alternate angles and that is why we have marked this angle as theta. That could also be uh, a way in which this angle is found. I found it in a different way, that's all. The angle between this reaction force P and the gate in the horizontal plane is theta. So the angle between the gate and the reaction force P is equal to theta. Now determining this value, determining, not determining, understanding that this value is theta is very important for analyzing this uh, gate, the forces acting on this gate for equilibrium. So I have drawn a bigger figure here. This is one gate. This is the one gate. This is F1 minus F2 and this is P and R. Now I've drawn it bigger because it is easier for me to explain. Uh, equilibrium of these forces when I draw it bigger. So uh, this is F1 minus F2, P and R and the angle made by P with the gate is theta. I have marked this angle as 90 degree because pressure force intersects the gate at uh, 90 degree. It is pressure force is normal to the gate. So now I mark this point as O, the point of intersection of these three forces. I mark it as O and similarly I will give A, B and C. A is this point, B is this point, C is this point at which pressure force intersects the gate. So I named these points because I am going to analyze it and it makes it easier if I can name the triangles. So considering triangles O, A, C and O, B, C. In these triangles, O, C is the common side and Angle OCA equal to angle OCB equal to 90 degree, which means that triangle OAC is similar to triangle OBC. They are similar triangles. This OAC and OBC are similar triangles. And since they are similar triangles, I can also say that angle OAC should be equal to angle OBC. That is, this angle is also theta. So from similar triangles, I have found that angle OBC is also theta. So I know all the angles involved in this set of forces. Only when I know all the angles involved will I be able to analyze them for equilibrium. So now I am going to analyze these forces for equilibrium. 
I'm going to take the axis. Uh, I'm going to take an axis along f1 minus f2 and call it the x-axis. And perpendicular to it, I'm going to along the gate. I'm going to draw the y-axis. Now, since the gates are in equilibrium, sigma f(x) and sigma f(y) should be equal to zero. That is, the net force in the x-direction and the net force in the y-direction should be equal to zero. So I've replaced f1 minus f2 as f. This is the net force f, pressure force f. Now, sigma fy, I will get it as minus p cos theta plus r cos theta. There is no component of f along the y-axis, just r cos theta in the positive y-direction and minus p cos theta in the negative y-direction. So, fy is minus p cos theta plus r cos theta and that should be equal to 0. That gives us the result that p and r are equal. When I analyze sigma fx, I will get sigma fx is equal to f minus r sin theta minus p sin theta. So, f minus r sin theta minus p sin theta is equal to 0. There is the net force in the x direction. But since p and r are equal, I can simply replace it. Or f is equal to p sin theta plus r sin theta. But p and r are equal. So, I can simply replace this as 2p sin theta. Or I will get p is equal to f by 2 sin theta, which is the same as r. So, I just found out the relationship between P, F and R in this triangle. So, that's all that you have to understand or the formulas that you should know in order to uh, calculate the uh, or, find, uh, or do a numerical problem on spillway gates. That the reaction force from the gate is equal to the reaction force from the river bank and it's equal to the pressure force, net pressure force acting on the gate divided by 2 sin theta, where theta is the uh, 180 minus 2 theta is the angle between the two gates. So now let's do a numerical problem uh, which will clear your head of any doubts that you are having in spillway gates. So each gate of a lock is 6 meter high and is supported by two hinges placed on the top and bottom of the gate. When the gates are closed, they make an angle of 120 degree. The width of the lock is 5 meter. If the water levels are 4 meters and 2 meters on the upstream and downstream sides respectively, determine the forces on the hinges due to water pressure. So, this is the question. Now, I am taking the top view of the gate. It is given to me that the angle between the gates is 120 degree and the width of the lock is 5 meter. So, width of the lock is nothing but this distance. This distance is 5 meter. And the angle between the gates is 120 degrees. So, from this, I know that 180 minus 2 theta, which is the angle between the two gates, is equal to 120 degree, which will give me theta is 30 degree. Also, width of the lock is 5 meter. So, these 30 degrees I am marking. Width of the lock is 5 meter. So, I need the width of each gate. I need B. B is the width of each gate. So, in order to find out B, I will use trigonometry. Since it's an isosceles triangle, this 5 meter gets divided into 2.5 meter and 2.5 meter by the center line. So I can write cos 30 is equal to 2.5 by B or B is equal to 2.5 by cos 30, which will give me 2.886 meter. So this is required for me in the numerical problem. As you would remember, if I wanted to find out pressure force F1, its formula is half rho G B H1 squared so that b term is there and that is why i have taken the time to find out the width of the gate and width of the gate was obtained as 2.886 meter now moving on into the elevation width of the gate is 2.886 meter the height of the gate is given in the problem as 6 meter you can see the hinges that i have drawn here at the top and bottom of the gate and uh, the depth of water upstream is 4 meter and the depth of water downstream is 2 meter these are the hinges. So, this is basically the dimensions that uh, we will be using in doing this problem. Uh, we have calculated 2.886 meter from the previous slide. Moving forward. So, now I am going to compute the total pressure force that is going to act on the gate. The net pressure force that is going to act on the gate. So, on the upstream side, the pressure force is F1 given by half rho g b h1 squared. And that can be calculated. Density is water. Now, density of uh, fluid, density, uh, the fluid is water, so density is 1000, G is 9.81, B has been calculated and H1 is 4 meter. And so the force F1 has been found out to be uh, 
uh, 226.493.28 newton or 226.493 kilo newton you also have to find out h star 1 and that that is the position at which uh, f1 is acting from the free surface is given by 2 h1 by 3 when I calculate, when I substitute h1 with 4 meter, h1 star is obtained as 2.67 meter from the free surface. Now, I have also written this is equal to 1.33 meter from the base. So, there is a purpose for which I have also written the distance. Actually, h1 star is distance from the free surface. Uh, you only need to find out 2.67 meter. But there is a reason why I have also written the distance of this force from the base, which I will explain to you later. So, if I were to mark the distances of f1, from the free surface, F1 is acting at 2.67 meter. From the base, F1 is acting at 1.33 meter. Now, similarly, I am going to find out the details of F2. F2 is rho half rho g b h2 squared, which on computation I will get 56623.32 newton or 56.623 kilo newton. H2 star can be uh, obtained as 2 h2 by 3 and that calculation is 2 into 2 by 3 which is 1.33 meter from the free surface and 0.67 meter from the base. Again for H2 star also I have calculated the distances both from the free surface as well as from the base. Why I have done this we will understand in a short while. So the distance from the free surface to F2 is 1.33 meter from the base is 0.67 meter. Net force is F1 minus F2 net force acting on the gate is 169869.96 newton or 169.869 kilo newton so now f1 is acting at 1.33 meter and f2 is acting at 0.67 meter f1 minus f2 is acting at a distance h now it is important that i know the position at which the net force net pressure force is acting only then I will be able to proceed with this problem and I will explain why. Okay. Because I should know the level at which all the forces on the gate are acting. All the forces on the gate will be acting at the level of net pressure force F. And so it is important that I determine the level at which F is acting. And this is exactly why I have calculated the distance of F1 from the base and F2 from the base. This is because the levels of free surface as you can see on the upstream and downstream side are different. Here it is 4 meter and here it is only 2 meter and so there is no common axis about which I will be able to take a moment if I took the distance from the free surface. Instead if I take the distance from the base, every force has a common uh, data. That is all the forces, the distance of all the forces are measured from the same axis that is the base or the floor of the river. F1 is acting at 1.33 meters from the base, F2 is acting at 0.67 meters from the base and F is acting at H from the base. If I want to find out H, I can easily use Varignon's theorem. That is the moment of F about the base is equal to sum of F, moment of F1 about the base and F2 about the base. So, to determine the application point of F, we apply Varignon's theorem. So, taking moment about the base, F into H is equal to F1 into 1.33, that is a clockwise moment. F2 into 0.67 is an anti-clockwise moment. F into H is a clockwise moment. So, I will give notations of clockwise as positive and anti-clockwise as negative, And I will obtain this expression. And so, I will get F1 is known to me, F2 is known to me. F is known to me, the only unknown is H. On substituting, I will obtain H is equal to 1.55 meter from the base. This is important because this means that the other reaction forces, that is P and R, are also going to act at 1.55 meter from the base because they are coplanar forces. They lie on the same plane. And so, since F acts at 1.55 meter from the base, the reaction forces P and R as well will act at 1.55 meter from the base. So this is the coplanar forces F1 minus F2 P and R and F, F1 minus F2 or F is 169869.896 Newton and theta is 30 degree. So P equal to R can be obtained as F by 2 sin theta. Since sin 30 is half, 2 into sin 30 will give you 1 which means P and R is also equal to 169869.96 Newton. And hence, the position of P and R is same as 
the position of F that is 1.55 meters above the base as they are coplanar forces. Now why we require the position of R is also important because in the question they have asked us for the reaction of the top and bottom hinges and R is a resultant of the reaction of the top and bottom hinges. Now using R and the position of R we will be able to find out the reaction force at the top hinge and the reaction force at the bottom hinge. So how that is I'll explain. So here you can see the gate, the big gate, 6 meter high gate. Reaction force R is acting at 1.55 meter from the base and these are the hinges of the gate. RT is the reaction force at the top hinge of the gate and RB is the reaction force at the bottom hinge of the plate. Now R is the resultant of RT and RB. So I can apply Varignan's theorem here to determine the value of RT and RB. To determine RT and RB, I will take moments about the base. So R into 1.55 should be equal to RT into 6 plus RB into 0. When you are taking moment about the base, distance of RT from the base is 6 meter. The distance of RP from the base is 0. The distance of R from the base is 1.55 meter. We have applied Varignan's theorem here. Moment of the resultant about the base is equal to sum of the moments of the components about the base. So using this, I will be able to find out RT. RT can be obtained as 43,883.073 Newton. This is one of our answers. In order to find out R bottom, you can do it using two methods. One method would be to take moments about the top. Instead of like we took moments about the base, we could also take moments about the top and find out R bottom. Or another way is simply that R top and R bottom are components of R. So RT plus RB should be equal to R. So RB would be R minus RT. Value of R is known to us. Value of RT is known to us which means Rb can be calculated to be 125986.887 Newton. And this was what the question was asking you to find out. Determine the reaction forces at the top and bottom hinge. Now this is uh, in for a university exam, from a university exam point of view, this is the maximum that they can ask you because this is a huge question. This is a big question. You have to first find out the net pressure force acting on the gate, the position of the pressure force, and then you have to find out the reaction force from the river bank, and then you have to find out the reaction force at the top and bottom hinges. And you can see that Barrington's theorem is playing a very big role in all these calculations. Also, the formula that you have learned for spillway gates, which is net pressure force on the upstream side is half rho g b h1 squared and uh, acting at 2 h1 by 3 from the free surface and f2 is equal to half rho g b h2 squared acting at 2 h2 by 3 from the free surface and net pressure force. Also important is that the reaction force from the gate is equal to the reaction force from the river bank is equal to net pressure force divided by 2 sin theta where theta is the angle that you obtain uh, between the gate and the uh, width of the lock. So this problem I hope you can actually rewind and uh, watch the problem once more because the more you uh, watch the problem the better your understanding will be. Maybe at the first go you might find it difficult but once you rewind it back to the numerical problem again and rewatch it uh, you will uh, see that you are understanding it better. So this spillway gates is one type of an application of uh, hydrostatic forces on surfaces and I hope that this topic and this concept has been cleared.